Hey, old Thrand here. Hey, old, this is the old Grim. Uh, and we're here as a reply to stabbing clarification by Lindy Beige. And we want to add that we love Lloyd's videos. We liked his verse. Uh, it, was, it was a really cool uh, video. The only thing we disagreed with, which he came back with his reply, or you did, Lindy, was replying to you, uh, and you state, we never, I never said anything about armor. Yeah, that's the main point he said, was he never said anything about armor. You call the dagger uh, video dagger fighting, uh, which implies daggers, which early century daggers were designed to fight against armor. You bring up the rondel in the uh, uh, European fight manuals in the treatise and old depictions, and in all these depictions you've shown in uh, this new reply, stabbing clarification, you say these guys are clearly unarmored. Yeah, that begs the question, what constitutes armor? What is armor? Uh, armor, to most people, falls in the category of things that are made out of metal, hardened leather, um, uh, just other materials that uh, increase your defense. But when you really think about it, almost anything that you wear is a, a form of armor in a sense. Correct. And the main thing we're seeing in these depictions out of the fight manuals uh, and the treaties are these men are basically in something very much you'd be familiar with, like you'd be familiar with Lindy. They're in a, like a garb that you would use for fencing or fighting. These guys are wearing what they would wear if they were going to a duel, if they were in a, in a melee, a brawl. They're wearing what they normally wear, which is a doublet. It's called an arming, an arming doublet for a reason. That's a form of gambeson. If you look up gambeson, gambeson is armor, and it's multiple layers of cloth. It can even stop an arrow. We're talking about like a longbow arrow. It will actually stop it. As a matter of fact, Mike Lotz has proven this with a heavy warbow that it stopped the bodkin point. So what you've got to ask yourself about it, if that's what they're wearing, is they're wearing uh, arming doublets, uh, you know, uh, why can't you see this in the pictures? We're showing you in the pictures that each picture, these men look like they're wearing some kind of uh, jacket or a uh, vestment or a, a jerkin. And all these ones are made out of multiple layers of cloth. If you look into it, an arming doublet is anywhere from uh, 18 to 30 layers of cloth or some mm -hmm. form of uh, lamination of cloth. Right, so to say that they're not wearing armor is, is not exactly accurate. They are wearing armor. And very effective at that. We still use it to this day in Kevlar armor. Mm -hmm. The only thing that they had trouble uh, uh, protecting were bends in the joints. I mean, like your inside of the elbow. At the, all the points of flexion or extension in the under, body. Uh, under the arm, the armpit. Certain areas, if you were to uh, put that many layers, you put 18 to 30 layers, layers in those areas, You'd wind up looking like... Uh, like uh, Randy, Ralphie's little brother on A Christmas Story when he starts crying and his mom says, What's wrong with you? Well, I can't put my arms down. Well, yeah, and how do he run down the street when he's chasing his brother? He can't put his arms down. He runs really awkward. He can't bend or flex his elbows or anything. Well, it, it makes me feel like if, if Lindy... I mean, he's an archaeologist, and I'm saying, Lindy, I know you are, that you study archaeology. Do you not look at the uh, arming uh, uh, jackets? Do you not look at the arming doublets, the... The jacks, the jack of plates, do you not look at this stuff and realize that people wore this every day, and if you look at it, it's very decorative, and it's very fashionable. It is. They'll, they'll have a high collar, and later they even had Elizabethan collars around mm -hmm. the top. Uh, they'll have, like, frill and lace around, and it was done with little slits in the outside layer, so you kind of see inner layers. And they used all different kinds of beautiful fabrics on the outside, but the inside was nothing more than a bunch of uh, layers of heavy linen that were, that were very tightly woven. Uh, even cotton's later century, uh, but multiple layers. We're talking, like I said, into the, up to the 30. Right. Uh, and you also sometimes have felt in it, uh, different forms of fabric that they thought that helped. I mean, they were just padding on the inside and actually layers to stop edges. Mm -hmm. and, and you get to a point where you, there's no way you can cut through it. No, it's you're impossible. you're not using that saber or club grip to cut through that. At this you point, cannot you have to, cut. Yeah, at this point, you have to go back to the plate era uh, uh, idea of finding those niches with that uh, ice pick grip and get into those points of articulation where there isn't as much fabric so that you can... Around the uh, neck, uh, under the arms, in the, in the, in the uh, bend of the elbow. And the pantaloons, the pantaloons were arming pantaloons. You can see this, they go together with the arming jacket. And we're saying pantaloons, we mean the short ones. Not only they wore tights underneath and you had pantaloons on the outside. Sometimes the entire pants were very well padded, mm. all the way down to the uh, ankle. 
Right. So when you look at this, plus anybody that does anything like Hema knows that the, uh, or does anything with just blades and no shields or anything, or even with shields, the shin's a very weak target. If you go for a shin, you're going to get hit somewhere else. It's not a highly probable target. You're not going for right. that as your Right. Not unless you have a pole arm and he's fighting with something much shorter than true, the, yeah, that. Yeah, that gives you something you could reach out and possibly get, and it's a it's a, a concern. Right. And the interesting thing about uh, human anatomy as it pertains to arming jackets and doublets and things like that is that the thinner places where the cloth is, where the articulation occurs, where that flexion and extension occurs in the human body, um, interestingly, those spots you aim at with that ice pick grip in a fight are all places where you have major arteries. Uh, and they're running. up high. None of them are down low. No. I mean, you're not going to stab somebody in the back of the, the knee. No. You know, I mean, this is kind of silly. I'm going to get down there and manage to get grappling, no. maybe. But maybe. the other thing, these, these, these grips were used for a lot of grappling and being able to have both arms available, having your arms down to protect those areas under your arm, and to have your elbow bends up where they're not exposed to either. Right, you have your forearms facing more. like more. a boxer, yes, yeah, with both be, hands yeah, up. Yeah, you so. like boxing, exactly. Right, so those areas are actually covered by you standing in that method. Mm -hmm. So what we're saying is we're not saying you're wrong, Lindy. We agree with everything you said that, uh, you said that, you know, we pretty much agreed with you, so why did we make a reply? I mean, what was the point? We're making a reply to further people's understanding. It's not necessarily to correct, correct you, Lindy Beige. It's to help people understand why you feel that saber grip is so important. And in today's contemporary society, especially where we live down here in the deep south. Oh, yeah, light layers, light clothing. Uh, very it, light. It's, it gives you way more options. Mm -hmm. uh, most of your shots are going to be to the body or the belly, mm -hmm. I mean, or the lungs or something in that category. You can just stab right in. I mean, it doesn't, right. doesn't matter. There's nothing going to stop you. Even a jacket, a jean jacket over a t-shirt uh, a t -shirt or a button-up shirt, you're probably going to stab through it. You can't yeah. cut through it. We're going to end you this it. You can still stab through it, and that grip does give you a lot of advantages in that sure situation. Does. I would use the club grip, especially with knives. Yeah. But when you get into longer uh, daggers, they don't really give you a reach advantage for cutting. And like the rondelle itself wasn't even designed for cutting. It was designed to get in niches, and it was very small. It was tri-bladed tri or sometimes round on one side and sharp on, on... It was very oddly made, but it was made to be strong and to stab through stuff such as multiple layers of cloth. So maybe if I were... Uh, well, you couldn't cut whatsoever. If I were garbed like Ralphie's little brother Randy and I had a whole bunch of layers of coats and jackets and you sweaters... Might and you might want the ice pick grip. You might want to use the ice pick grip. Another point that I don't think it, most people are getting is a big wide blade trying to stab through multiple layers of cloth, like a buoy, if you mm. have that many layers of cloth, even though it has the clip tip, it becomes more difficult it to does. do. The small, narrow point, like on a rapier, mm. or a small sword like they used to use, was more efficient at going through that type of uh, right. protection. So they yes, they did kill each other. But a lot of times, if it was out in a brawl or something, and not a duel, a ritualistic duel for the first blood or something, they'd have these layers of cloth to give them advantage, and you might have to go for niches or areas that aren't as well armored. You, even then, you wouldn't just be stabbing for a belly shot, possibly getting it really well. No. You might stab him and not get enough of a, a, a depth of penetration to kill him if you do That's make right. it in. So all we're trying to do is we're not trying to beat a dead horse to death like we, we've done before. But uh, just say that we do agree with you. There was no argument. We don't disrespect you. We like your channel. We, love, we, we thought that was hilarious. It was hysterical, the uh, dance and everything and this reply. But our main point that I think you kind of just avoided was in these depictions you act like they're not wearing armor still. And they are wearing armor, and they're trying to fight people who do wear armor. And they're trying to fight people who have the wealth and the money to wear such things. They're not worried about a guy running around in one layer of clothing trying to rob them with a small knife. Mm, uh, most right. of these men, the way they dressed and the, the gear, they unless they totally t got taken by surprise and got their throat slit and they were drunk in an alley trying to take a piss, I really don't think that they would. the guy would stand much of a chance. Your right. average... Uh, uh, hoodlum and the uh, your average cut and the, yeah mm -hmm. is is going to die to these men the way they dressed what they were wearing was armor all the time the way they trained and the type of weaponry they carried and they were always prepared to fight at any given time sure I don't think that that's who they were training to fight I think they yeah. were training to fight other people uh, nobles wearing and, and uh, higher class uh, uh, middle class like armor, merchants, armor, things like yeah. that could afford it right would be where they would be training to fight these type of individuals who trained as well. And they were trying to get around those type of defenses, sure. which even though it's cloth, cloth is armor. It is. I mean, without the cloth, uh, the plate wouldn't be as useful. It That's would right. not. You would not yeah. have the padding. You'd get and armor bites. You'd, you'd be... Uh, some thrust would make it through mm -hmm. certain types of things like lances and crossbows and heavy bows. Right. And they would make it through to such a degree that they could disable you even if the plate did protect you. That's right. And in and the niches, you'd have no protection. I think it's just deceptive to anyone who looks at tall hoppers or any of the other uh, fight manuals, and they see people in what looks like clothing. They see what looks like 
a couple of uh, chubby guys, a couple of uh, obese guys going at it with knives. With small and legs and arms. With small, small legs. legs and arms. And I think that it's it's a problem of you think of these things as fashionable clothes like we do our clothes today, and you think, well, why would anybody risk getting their good clothes cut up? When really that's exactly what it was designed for. It's just designed that you could wear it all the time and still look. And the barrel chest, and the chest, the big old chest, and it comes out to like this apex where nobody's shaped that way, where you have a, a, a like a dome shape on the body, much mm -hmm. like a breastplate, and shaped like a breastplate. You can see this in the in the actual doublets that were in, that you can see when you look at the museums. So what we're trying to say is that is the shape of all those layers of cloth to protect the main most most uh, precious organs, the heart, the lungs. All these things, that's what it's for. Right. That's what the most layers are going to be at any given time are going to be on the body to protect those organs. And that's why I'm saying you cannot cut it, can't cut through it. You might be able to thrust through it, but then you need all the power you could possibly right. get. And, and a nice pick grip offers you that in, in a situation where you're grappling. And, and, and I'm sure not everybody had 30 layers. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, some people had less. It was very expensive to have these kind of uh, uh, arming doublets or fencing doublets made or Akatins or army jackets or there's so many names for it. if you look up canvas and you can see it but I want to go ahead and end this I didn't want to over talk with it but to explain if you look at all the depictions the, even the panelings are wearing everything is a form of armor that's right and, and think about it when you're in HEMA you wear your you wear your uh, gambesons and you wear your uh, or your fencing fencing gear and you wear your uh, fencing mask that's right and that's when you actually train out right so yeah. they were wearing stuff like that in in class and that's what they're training to go against because people wore stuff not the actual fencing mask, but they wore the actual protective clothing and gear that needed to be circumvented to get the guy. That's, right. that's pretty much it. Right. So our ancestors weren't stupid. They knew what they were doing, and that's what we were addressing was there was a reason for that grip and for using rondelles and fighting that way. And modernly, no, it's it's more of a matter of preference and, and what you would like to do. So exactly. uh, I would pick the uh, club or saber grip any day over the ice pick grip modernly. That's right. There's not a lot of people wearing heavy layers unless you live uh, someplace up north, maybe where people spend most of the year wearing heavy jackets and sweaters and things like that. Then, yeah, I might go back to the ice grip uh, idea because it's more preferable for the context. Correct. But anyway, we just wanted to make that point back to, to Lindy or Lloyd. And we love your videos. We respect you. We like you. We're not putting you down, but we're just trying to tell you that in those depictions, those are armor. That is right. Cloth, right. armor, gambeson. Anyway, thank you for uh, watching today. Uh, be sure to... Uh, like this video and any others you've watched, be sure to subscribe to our channel, Thag and Thrand. Uh, find us on Facebook at Thrand and Elgrimmer's Well of Remembrance. Also, uh, ask to join our private group, the uh, Thag and Thrand YouTube Boat Crew. Uh, it's a closed group. Send us an, uh, a uh, request to join. We'll let you join as long as you're cool with everybody. You can stick around. Uh, you can post messages. You get to see exclusive content no one else gets to see. And uh, also, be sure to help us improve our content. Donate at www.patreon.com slash thrand. Uh, the more you help improve our content, uh, the more fun we all have watching and, and, uh, and, and learning more about uh, how we use uh, ancient uh, arms and armor. Sure, and tactics and techniques. So, right. farewell. Farewell. <laughs>